Uh, but now we, today we are going to make our naive poem as far as our poems are concerned. And the content of our poem is Fox Monologue by Jack Fox. Fox Monologue is one of the very important poems as far as your examinations are concerned. Okay? What is the speciality of this poem? Why this poem has so much importance? Or why the examiners give much more importance and give different kind of questions from this poem? Today, I will tell you about all of those in this lecture. First of all, when we see a hawk, in general sense, what we mean by a hawk, Hawk is basically a bird that is uh, very, uh, what we say uh, in general sense, uh, uh, harmful for the minor creatures, especially the birds. Okay? It kills everything that he loves. It means that there is no mental understanding in this character. There is no inflexibility. Inflexibility means to think about what should be done and what should not. Okay? On the other hand, the writer Ted Hall basically has tried to explain the character of the monologue by me, what we mean a monologue. A monologue is a talk by self person, person in loneliness. It means that when a person talks with himself in isolation, it means that he is talking with himself. So in that condition, this poem can be seen as an imaginative, that how a character thinks about itself and the other person. Why? Because the hawk is the major element or character in this poem. That is why the writer has tried to uh, to throw light, to pay attention of the humanity that in shape or like the shape of a dictator. By a dictator, what we mean? We mean that an armed officer who is, who wants to be ruled by a cook or by a cook over the population, over the country, over the masses or uh, over the people and he wants to do in, uh, the government to take the control of the government okay so this that is why we say him a dictator so in this point if we see that this point is very much very close has very close relation between the hawk or a dictator person let's come and see that what are the basic similarities and important elements we can find in this poem. Again, this poem is very much important as far well as our examination is concerned. First of all, we talk about the Ted Hobbs. Ted Hobbs is basically a British writer, a British writer. He was born in August 17, 1930 at Yorkshire. Yorkshire is basically a district in America, so not America, in Britain basically. And that was a yeah, it was popular or famous for the coal coal mining. Coal mining means that coal. So for this like uh, uh, in Quetta, in our country in Quetta, we have the coal powered mines like that. Uh, just cure our mines from where the salt is to be taken. Okay. The same is the coal coal mining. It means that the mines from the coal cannot can be. Collective or is collective. Okay, so that part was very uh, his place of work. Okay, the next element that we see or the point that we can see from the point of view, the point is based on the delusions of power. What is the main theme of this point? It is the lust. Lust being lust of what of power. It means that a person or a character wants to rule over the people, even the every creation of the world that Allah Almighty has created. Okay? Because thought is a bird. It means that his emphasis is to kill every minor bird or animal 
that we all we can be controlled very easily. Like that, a hawk basically likes to eat fish, likes to eat rat, likes to eat a pigeon, likes to eat every dead small creature or animal that we can think that we can control. The same is if we see this point. In the shape of a dictatorship, it means that the a leader of the armed forces can have can he can take any kind of a control over the people. He can behave, he can misbehave with the public by hook or by crook to take control over them. Like that, we have a very clear example about the Indian armies over the Kashmiri peoples. I mean that. At that place, obviously the, America, the Indian army is ruling or like showing their characteristics as just like a hawk. It means that they do not think to whom they have to show pity and with whom they don't have to show any kind of a pity. So when we see the hawk's monologue, so uh, a bird that is that has been created, according to the hawk's, it's uh, the correctest point of view that the hawk thinks that I am the sole creature and since the time when I was created by the Lord Almighty or Allah Almighty, there is no change has been made in my nature. My nature is very strict. My nature is that the thing that I do not like, kill that, destroy that at every condition, at every cost, right? So this is what uh, an art or forces person mean a dictator thinks about that. The person, if the people do not like that person, he thinks kill them. And this is what we see in the different kind of histories uh, in the past, obviously. If we take a simple example about the British rulers, when they came to the subcontinent and they tried to uh, dominate over the people of the subcontinent. How did they behave with the people? How? They killed the people, people uh, for the sake of their pleasure, for the sake of their interest, for the sake of to take a control over, the, over all of those people. So that is why the people of the subcontinent started obviously making hate obviously with the people, British people. Hawk is the symbol of a dictator. This is another important element. It means that what is the main symbol? Why like this is a symbolical point. And the character of the hawk, it has a very much resemble, resemblance with the dictator. And uh, I have already talked about it. Now, uh, point number four. Uh, in this point, uh, uh, the basic reason of the creation of the hawk has been explained. It means that he thinks who thinks it means the hawk thinks about itself that he is a creation and cause of creation. It is because he, due to that, the Allah Almighty or the God Almighty had created all the world. Why? Because the Allah Almighty wanted to take their control over the creation of the world that as I am the sole creator in the Allah Almighty is the creator so that is why Allah has given me according to the uh, imaginative element take a mentality the uh, all thinks that I am the basic reason the world has been created why because of me okay so this is the main element the king or the ruler to give life and that it means that as I am the sole creation, sole creation, so that is why I have the right, I have my own opinion, not opinion, the right that if it is up to me that if I can leave to make a life or leave the bird or any other creature, it's up to me. Why? Because, but because the Allah, the God Almighty has never made any kind of a change in my nature. So my nature is to take a death, to give a death. In other words, an angel of death. I am the basically angel of God, death. I am the supreme power that give the sign that allows the death to the creation, minor creation obviously. 
Then the point, point number six. In the point number six, we think that this character is based on egoism. Okay, this is one of the very important elements. As a dictator, if we see, a person becomes more egoistic. But what we mean an egoistic, it means that he has nothing, things or ideas except how he has to take the government or how he has to take the rule over the government. He becomes the either, he always thinks only just for the sake of his own interest. The thing that he likes, he appears there. If the thing he doesn't like, he can openly condemns that and destroys that. That is why we say the uh, egoistic poet. Then the lust of power. Obviously, this is the second point. With the help of that, this character has been defined very easily. A dictator, we have already discussed. The inflexibility of the character. It means there is no change in the character, in the nature of the character. It means for the sake, the sake, the thing. For what the creature, this uh, I have been made, I have been created, I am the angel of that gives death, that signs the death of the creator. And then opposing the change, it means I do not want to see any kind of a change in the nature as well. Why? Because as I am the sole honor, I am, I want to uh, take the uh, kingship. I want to take the rulership, I want to take the leadership over the uh, creation of the Almighty of the God, obviously. So that is why this character does not accept any kind of a change. And in the end, we see that the constant element of the nature, this is the main element. The nature that plays a very important and vital role. Why? Because it's our nature. If we think about characteristics, William Shakespeare has very clearly and very beautifully explained that the habit can be changed, but the nature cannot. It means that if you want to change, take a change in yourself, so you have to change the habit. And if you do not want to take a change in yourself, in spite of every kind of a struggle, so it means that what the, in one time or in another time, you definitely show that unconscious reaction of the that is based on your nature. So that is why nature plays a very important role. And talk is basically the obviously the name of the nature in other words. As in the human affairs, this is the in, uh, like that. We have given the references of human nature here. Why? Because the, uh, when we talk about the human references, it means that uh, why that we mean by a dictator that if a dictator doesn't want to take any kind of a change in his nature and he wants to take a rule over the nature over the government and has every aspect over the masses in the state etc if he doesn't want to take uh, make a change in his nature how is it possible that a hawk and a hawk can change his nature as I do think so that you have very clearly understood this point and the textual study we are we are